Welcome back to today's video. So on Twitter and uh, fuck, not Crunchyroll. So on Twitter and Discord, I asked you guys if you would want me to start doing anime reviews based off of the first three or three or so episodes of a show within the season. And I'm gonna kind of prioritize the newer shows within each season. But obviously, if people want me to review a different ep show that already in the past has aired, then I will gladly do it as long as it gets enough traction and it's not just one person saying it. So with that being said, let's put on the review hat and let's jump into it. So today we're reviewing the Rising of the Shield Hero from the current season of 2019 starting off. So unlike other isekai genres, this one kind of has a unique start to it in the way it sends the hero, the protagonist, now Fumi Iwatani, to the new world. He is not just in the game and he forgot to log out or he can't log out looking at you sword art online and he, he wasn't just standing in the street blinking and suddenly being transported to the world instantaneously upon being summoned and throughout the very beginning of the story the protagonist finds himself kind of being put at a lower level than the other three heroes that were also summoned alongside him they kind of flaunt their superiority and knowledge, and they, unlike him, seem to be very full of themselves, very brave, very just full of bravado, and ready to make demands and be very confident in themselves. Another contrast between the protagonist and other heroes are the personalities of the heroes. Now Fumi is very willing to help right off the bat, while the others immediately demand respect and reward for just being summoned to this world and being asked to help in this great conflict. Now, the kingdom that summoned them did so out of desperation because they had already tried to fight these re recurring catastrophes once and they barely made it out. And that's when they realized that they needed the hero's help and they are desperate. But regardless of that fact, the main protagonist seems to be kind of ostracized by the people of this country simply because he has a shield and has nothing to do with his character. And so throughout the first long episode of the show, we, he kind of goes on through the motions of being in a new world and kind of being in a generic RPG almost, where he, he has to go get armor, he has a party member, he trains by killing weak little monsters that are easily farmable. Now, shortly after all of this, we quickly see the downfall of the main protagonist, now Fumi. After some certain events occur, he is quickly thrown under the bus, quickly made to be hated by everyone in the country, and his reputation is destroyed. Regardless of his true character, regardless of facts and evidence, he is seen as a horrible person who, if you weren't a hero, would be executed on the spot more than likely. This makes him a very jaded person. He becomes very bitter very quickly, and he learns to be very forceful in the way he earns fairness from either merchants or other people. Even though he's regarded with hate, he still does his job to work towards being a hero for this country. In the following episodes of the season, and as of, as of making this review, there's only three episodes. In the following episodes, we see a new, very important character be developed and follow Nafumi around. And even towards the end of the third episode, we start to see some redemption for the protagonist. We start to see him changing the opinions of people from disgust to admiration for his actions. I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to spoil it. This show does have some twists and turns. It does have some things that just are not predictable, which I like in an anime. I don't like it when I can sit through a show and just kind of say, oh, um, Oh, he's gonna go to this town next. Oh, he's going to kill these things. He's going to save the day and everyone's going to love him immediately. You know, that doesn't exactly happen. It's not as predictable as a typical fantasy world show might be otherwise. So with that being said, this is probably one of my favorite shows for this season and I highly recommend it, especially if you like fantasy action, you know, kind of those RPG elements in a show. I will mention this show does technically have some darker themes in it. Slavery is a thing in this world. They don't just brush over it. It's not just like, oh, there are slaves, but they're treated nicely. They kind of 
they make slaves out and th there is racism as well so if you're easily offended don't watch the show but that I'm, I'm speaking very easily offended if you're even a remotely normal person you'll be fine if i had to give the show a rating based off of first impressions and first impressions only not total rating for an entire show i would probably give it a five out of five for first impressions um obviously it's too early to tell if this will actually turn out to be a great show we're gonna eat tokyo ghoul so yeah uh let me know if you guys want me to do more videos like this this is kind of like a trial run i'm not it's not very structured i'm not very good at this and i don't think i'm of a, of a and i don't think i'm a professional viewer anyway this is kind of like a semi-casual viewers anime review series so this is i'm not going to go super in depth with these shows that i'm going to be i'm not going to be breaking them down into their base components and i kind of want to just give my first impressions of the show i really like the rising of the shield hero so far i think it's going to be one of the better ones for this year that's because i think a lot of the newer ones can be pretty shit but that's that so uh leave your feedback in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and um eat ass